Do you love Builder Nation saves? Well, on this video, I will be showing you my top five Builder Nation saves for Football Manager 2024. My first suggestion is a new league that's been added to Football Manager 2024 this year, and it is Japan and the J League. Japan is an unbelievable team to manage. They have some very good talents this year in Football Manager. You've got players like Kubo, who is absolutely smashing it at Raul Sociedad this year, winning La Liga Player of the Month for last month. They've also got players like Daichi Kamada, who's absolutely cracked and just moved to Lazio in real life also. They've also got Mitoma, one of the best wingers in the world right now and one of the best wingers on FM24, in my opinion. So the national team is absolutely stacked with players. We'll have a quick look at their squad. Their squad is insane. You've got Endo, who's just moved to Liverpool as well and is captain of the Japanese national side. You've also got players like Minamino and, if you're a Celtic fan, Maeda and Furuhashi. One of the best teams in Asia already, but that's not where the challenge is for this nation. The challenge will be in the Japanese J League. As you can see, the J League is ranked fourth in continental reputation, and it's going to be tough to overtake the top league. As you know it, the Saudi Premier League is one of the best leagues in the world at the moment in terms of transfer budgets and players they're attracting to the league. Can you bring the Japanese league all the way to being the best league in Asia. The choice of team to be in the J-League, to take the J-League to being the best team in Asia, for me, has to be Nagoya Grampus. Arsene Wenger used to manage there back in the day, and they are a, a hidden power in Japan. They've got some great players in the squad. I won't make out like I watch Grampus 8 every week, but there are a few players here that I do know. Langreek, the old Australian goalkeeper, is a very, very good goalkeeper for the J League, in my opinion. And you've got other players in their starting eleven that look absolutely cracked. Nagai, another old experienced Japanese international up front. Can you take Grand Passate to being the best team in Asia and the J League to being the best team in Asia, as well as winning the World Cup with Japan? What an exciting challenge this is. Let me know in the comments below if you are going to take on this challenge. And if you've made it this far into the video, please do like and subscribe to the channel. It means we can keep making content like this. Next up on my list is one of the smallest nations in the world. It is the rock that is Gibraltar. They are ranked 202nd in the world. And it is very much a non-league type save. I mean that with the greatest respect. They do have teams that qualify for the early stages of the Champions League. But the quality of football out there is not the best given the population size that they do have of only 33,000 people. I've been to Gibraltar, it's very nice, but it's also very, very small at the same time. Can you take Gibraltar all the way to winning the Euros, to winning the World Cup? Can you make Gibraltar one of the best teams in the world? Getting them to the top 100 in the world ranking is gonna be tough enough. We'll take a little look at the key players in their squad that you have to start off with. 40 year old center back playing for Lincoln GIB. I, like I said, it is Vanarama National League level and beyond. He's got he's an experienced international and will be fine in the first couple of seasons as manager there. Another experienced international in league, Hasciaro. I'm going to ruin these names, lads. It's a theme on the channel. Don't worry about it. Looks okay for this sort of level as well. And if we take it one final look at a player, it's all experience for the Gibraltar national team. Can you build up their youth teams and bring them on to being one of the best teams in the world? This is an unbelievable challenge and a challenge that I'm going to be excited to take on at some point in this FM. The Gibraltar's League is 114th ranked in Europe and it is going to be a long way up to push it into the top 100 leagues and beyond. I mean, you've got to overtake the Premier League with a league that just has 11 teams and 33k worth of people on the island. It is an unbelievably tough challenge and the toughest Builder Nation challenge you can do in the main game, in my opinion. Now, what team should you be? The choice really is up to you, but one of the best teams in Gibraltar is Lincoln GIB. They've got a lot of the Gibraltar's national team players playing for them and they're going to be the easiest one if you want to do it. But if you fancy a little bit of a challenge, then pick someone else. Maybe pick Glacius United. They could be one of the teams you could take forward. And I look forward to taking this challenge at some point in FM24. Let me know in the comments below if you're going to try this. This is an insane challenge.
Next, we move to India, one of the biggest populated countries in the world. So we've gone from one of the smallest to one of the biggest. 1.4 billion people currently live in, in India and they are sports mad fans. They follow their cricket team wherever they go. And football is on the brink of getting bigger in the nation. They've certainly got the population size. And if they put the money behind it, they could be one of the biggest and best nations in football in history. Their world ranking, they are just currently inside the top 100 teams in the world. And that's mainly down to a few of their key men. Sunil Chetri, 38-year-old experienced striker. But look at those stats for a 38-year-old. He is the Indian Ronaldo, in my opinion. 18 leadership, 17 determination. He's got great teamwork, great penalties, great work rate. And he's got good finishing as well. 142 caps, 92 goals for the national side. So a great goal to game ratio in a team that hasn't always been very good at international level. Sandish Jihan as well is a solid centre-back playing for Goa FC as well. 55 caps, 5 goals. He will be solid for you in the first few seasons. And then you've got Gurpeet Singh Sandhu, one of the best goalkeepers ever to come out of India, if not the best goalkeeper. He is playing for Bangalore FC in India. What a player he is and what a player he will be for the national side. If qualifying and winning World Cups and Asian Nations trophies with India wasn't hard enough, then making the Indian League the best league in Asia is going to be very tough. How are you going to overtake Saudi with the current league ranked 30 in asia it's a it's below things like the uzbek league the bahrainian league but there is hope at the end of the tunnel and honestly you could pick any of these teams to do it if you want to be one of the best teams in the league then Kerala is your choice they've got some great players they've got a big big stadium as well 53,000 capacity stadium so there's money to be made there at this club and this club would make it an easy run in for you to drive money to the club, drive investment and then drive up your facilities and drive yourself towards the Asian Champions League. Can you do it all with India? What a challenge that is. It has nearly been 20 years since Greece won Euro 2004 and that is making me feel very, very old. They had a team of underdogs in 2004 and their team hasn't improved much since which is such a shame current manager gustavo poya and greece are doing things in real life the right way having some good results against the netherlands recently they've got some brilliant players in their team they've got kostas shimikas one of the best left backs in the premier league well he's back up to robertson but he's very very good and he'll be solid for you in the greek national side they are ranked 48th in the world so in the top 50 but trying to get them into the top 10 will be a massive struggle. Konstantinos Mavarampos at centre-back, currently signed for West Ham, looks an absolute animal at centre-back. Like I said, Greece do produce the odd players here and there. And Flakamakis at Nottingham Forest is a great goalkeeper to start off. He had a career at Benfica and is now in the Premier League with Forest. What a player he is. And the national team have got some good players, like I said. Now, what team will you choose in Greece? Here is my recommendation. I am going for Pauk. One of the big teams in Greece, but not one of the ones that always win the Greek League. And they start off with a very decent squad with some great players like William Troost, Ekong, the old Watford centre-back. Can you revive his career in the Greek League? Experienced Nigerian international at centre-back. A great starting centre-back for the game, especially in the Greek League. They've got Chelsea reject Baba Rahman in at left-back as well. A very much, this is a team of wasted potential talent, but can you bring them up to being one of the best teams in Greece? To finish it off, their forward line is stacked with talent. Zivkovic, can you revive his career? The mercurial talent, once touted to be one of the best wingers in the world during his career, hasn't quite taken off, but can you be the man or woman that does this for him? And then one of my favourite wonder kids in football manager history is Kirill Despadov. I have a soft spot for Bulgarians and this guy is absolutely class. Will you win the Champions League with the, Greek, with the Greek side? And will you take the Greek League to being the best league in Europe? Currently ranked 21st. Can you get it into the top 10 as your first long-term objective? And then moving it up to being becoming the best league in Europe. Last but not least is Uruguay. And they are currently ranked 16th in the world and one of the best teams in world football. They've got stacked talent like Ronald Arejo at Barcelona, one of the best defenders on the game. And their new generation of talent is also backed up by players like Fede Valverde, 
one of the best central midfield players in the game playing for Real Madrid. There is a mix of young and old in this squad. Cavani is still going at Boca Juniors and still looks very good for 36, but he won't be a long stay in the national side. Uruguay last won the World Cup in the 1950s. Can you bring them the World Cup glory? It's going to be a tough one. There are big teams like France, Netherlands, England to beat. But with the squad that's got Arejo and Valverde, as alongside players like Lucas Torreira, you definitely stand a chance, especially when Uruguay do produce so many good young players on the world stage. Can you take the Uruguayan League from being the sixth best league in South America to the number one? And it's below leagues like Ecuador and Paraguay and Colombia. So you've got a lot of work to be done in the first instance. But if you want to make it easy for yourself, the best team to pick will be Preneferal to win the Copa Libertadores. They are one of the biggest and best teams in Uruguay, in my opinion, and do produce the best wonder kids and cheap beasts in the game as well. But if you want to make it a little bit harder on yourself, then I would go for Liverpool FC. Again, they are another big club in Uruguay, but simply I pick them because they've produced players like Fabrizio Diaz in the past, who's one of the best young central midfield players on the game and has recently signed for a big Saudi Arabian club. Let me know what of these top five build a nation challenges you will take on in the comments below. And if you want to see me take any on and I will see you on the next saves video.